In this example problem, we're going to use Response 2000 to develop a factored moment axial force diagram for the blow section. We can see that the section is not symmetrical about the axis of bending, so we're going to need to analyze the section for both positive bending, where we have our pre-stressing strands at the bottom, and uh, negative bending, where we'll assume that the pre-stressing strands are in the top of the section. Before going to the software itself, I'm going to walk you through the steps required in this process. The first step is to input the section of material properties like we did in previous examples. We need to input two different sections, the first being our positive bending section and the second our negative bending because our section is not symmetrical about the, the axis of bending. So these are two different analyses, uh, so we'll start with the uh, positive bending side. The second step is to use the response analysis procedure uh, entitled the MN interaction. This um, analysis option will automatically develop a moment axial interaction curve as shown here. With this curve, we can select different points on the curve and it'll give us uh, different outputs for, uh, for that point. So it'll give us longitudinal strain and uh, longitudinal reinforcing stress. So those would be the, the two of interest, of primary interest for us. And then you can also see down here the uh, combination of moment and axial load for the, the point that you have selected. I have found that this uh, MN interaction analysis option doesn't always give you a, a, an accurate curve for the section. So what I always do is I'll do a more detailed analysis using the sectional response analysis option and defining different uh, applied constant axial loads. So what, what we'll do is we'll step through and we'll change the axial load that's applied, do a sectional response, and that'll give us one point on our moment uh, axial load interaction diagram. And uh, again, because we're we don't have a symmetrical section, we'll need to do this for both the positive and uh, negative bending situations. We can get the uh, plot shown here by changing the applied axial load and running the sectional response for each applied axial load. And you can see the, the blue points and the blue line here are for our positive bending case and the orange points here for our negative bending case. Um, note that the negative or negative is axial compression here. So uh, you can see if we compare this to the automatically generated moment axial interaction diagram, uh, it does a pretty good job other than a, a couple points here for this cross section. Uh, again, I found that if you have more complex sections, then um, the difference between these two curves, the, the gray and the uh, blue and orange um, can increase. So it's better if you always do the uh, iterative process or the process here where you use the sectional response and uh, change the applied axial load for each point. We'll need to find some additional values to be able to calculate our fee factors for the different points. Uh, response will output the top and bottom strains for you so you can find them from the program. And using the top and bottom strains, we can calculate our KD value, the uh, distance from the top to our neutral axis. And uh, we can also then find the st stress, or sorry, the strain in the pre-stressing that's caused by this applied stress. And we can use that to find the total strain in the pre-stressing by just adding in the uh, delta epsilon P, the strain differential. We can use this epsilon p then, the total strain in the pre-stressing with the ramberg osgood stress-strain relationship to check um, the calculated stress that we found versus the outputted stress that response gives us. And uh, this will help to make sure that our calculations are correct. We can then use the epsilon, p, or epsilon sub pf to find the phi factor at different values. For ACI 1319, our, for pre-stress reinforcement, our yield strain is assumed to be 0 0.002. And for non-spiral transverse reinforcement, the compression controlled fee is going to be 0 0.65.
We can then use the uh, equations from ACI 31819 to find our phi based on this epsilon p sub f that we found above. And uh, we'll, we'll do that in a spreadsheet for, the, for our different points on the next slide. Shown here is an example of the Excel sheet that I set up for positive bending uh, using the outputs from response that we'll see how to find um, later in this example and the calculated values using the equations from the previous slide. You can see we find the epsilon t and epsilon b, the top and bottom strain in our section from response. And using these values, we can calculate our kd. Using the kd and these values, we can calculate the strain caused by the applied loads in the pre-stressing. And then using this, we can calculate our phi factor. Then we take our phi factor times m and phi times p to calculate our phi mn and, and phi pn. We can also compare the st stress that we, we would calculate from our uh, strain in the, the pre-stressing. So we take the strain in the pre-stressing from the applied loads plus our delta epsilon p to get this column here, epsilon p, and then take or use this in the ramberg osgood expression to calculate the stress in the pre-stressing. And we can compare this column, which we calculated, to the column of outputted stresses from response. And we want to just make sure that they're relatively close. So here you can see uh, we're within about 5 uh, five KSI. So we're reasonably close. We can now use the information from the previous table to plot our factored moment axial diagram. So you can see here the light blue and light orange are unfactored curves, and then the orange and blue curves are our factored curves. Um, so you can see here where we're tension controlled uh, in the blue, and then the rest of the curve where uh, compression con controlled here. So we could use this then if we were uh, designing the section to check our factored moment axial curve against our um, ultimate lo applied loads. We're now going to go through the procedure briefly, and I'll, I'll show you how to do this in uh, Response 2000 and Excel. We're now ready to continue the example, and we'll be first inputting the section into response. So the first thing, uh, I'm recording from the US, so we'll put it in US customary units, and we can do a quick define of our section. We're going to do positive bending, so I'm going to label that. And uh, we have five KSI concretes. Um, the yield strength of the steel doesn't necessarily matter, so we'll leave that consistent. And we'll keep it on uh, 270 KSI low relaxation half inch strands. Clicking on next, we'll use a rectangular section with a 12 inch width and 24 inch height. We have no uh, non pre stress reinforcement in the top or the bottom. Uh, no stirrups, and we have three half-inch strands with a locked-in strain of six milli strain. So we'll finish. So you can see the cross-section here. We can finish our definition coming uh, down through. So our uh, material properties we can start with. Uh, in the detailed material properties, we can change some of these values. So we're given a, a peak strain of 2.25, so I'm going to change that in this definition. Um, we can select different base curves, compression softening, and tension stiffening curves. Um, so some of those things we can adjust here. So I, I changed that, so I'm going to modify and then click OK. Come back to define. Uh, we can change the concrete section. Um, we have a 12 by 24 inch section, so we'll just leave that the same. Uh, we don't have any transverse reinforcement or longitudinal reinforcement. So the next thing we'll do is, is look at our tendons. So you can see here, we have three strands. Uh, half inch strands, six milli strain, all that's okay. Um, the distance from the bottom though, we need to change. So we're going to change this value to four. So we have four inches from the bottom of the section to the center of the strands. We're gonna click modify and click, uh, we have low relaxation strands, so that's fine. And we'll click okay. So now we have our, our cross section here. So now we're ready to, to solve. And the first thing that we can do is we can solve and use this MN interaction curve option. 
The MN interaction curve option will give us the automatically generated moment axial interaction diagram shown here. And it'll give us nine different plots uh, for any point that we select on this curve. So we can select a point and we can see the top and bottom strain in the section. We can see the stress in the uh, longitudinal reinforcement. And we can also, so this would include tension stiffening, and we can see the longitudinal reinforcement stress at a crack, which does not include tension stiffening. Then we can also see uh, the moment and axial load at the point that we have selected. So we can, you know, click around and we can get different values using this plot. What uh, I'm going to generate a, uh, a moment axial interaction diagram using the sectional response option. So the two values that we're going to take from this plot are the maximum axial compression and the maximum axial tension. So we'll take the moment and axial load from that point and the moment and axial load from this point here and move those into our Excel sheet. We can now take the values that we had from our response and, and plug them into our Excel sheet. Now you can see here an Excel sheet that I have set up with some input values that we'll need for our calculations. We have a section for positive bending and a section for a negative bending. So we're doing positive bending right now, so we'll start with these values. Uh, so the points that we'll plug in, uh, we had a moment of 56.2 kip feet for our uh, axial tension and 133.4 kips. And then on the other side, we had a value of 48.5 kip feet for a moment and negative 1,357.4 kips for our um, axial load. So next we need to decide how many points we'll find in between. Uh, you can just you can choose. Typically, I'll try to do every hundred kips or so. Um, so I'm just going to copy from my full data here. So we'll do from zero to 1,300. And for each of these axial loads now, we're going to find the moments, and we're also going to find the uh, top and, and bottom strain for all these points. I'm going to come back to response now, and I'm going to do the, a sectional approach using an applied load, applied axial load. So we're going to come into loads and click on loads, and we're just going to do one example. So we'll, we'll choose an axial load other than zero. So let's do negative 200 kips. It's a, a constant applied load, not incremental. So we'll just uh, enter a negative 200 there. So that's 200 kips axial compression. Click OK. We come back up to solve. And now we're going to click on sectional response. So we click on sectional response, and we get the uh, moment, uh, moment curvature diagram. Um, for our section with that applied axial load, we get our, our top and bottom strains. We get our longitudinal reinforcing stresses or stress. So now we can enter in these values into our Excel sheet. Coming back to our Excel sheet, we can enter in those values. So remember, we had negative 200 kips applied load. So we'll enter in our moment, which we found to be 322.7 kip feet. Then we'll enter in our, our top strain, which is negative 2.86, and our bottom strain, which will be 6.05. We can also enter in the stress and the pre-stressing, 244.8. So you can see I, I have the Excel sheet set up already. So we'll calculate your, your KD, your epsilon PF, phi for that point, and your factored points. And then it'll also calculate your uh, F sub P, the stress found from your calculated strain. And we can compare this to our uh, stress that we found from response and you know we can see they're relatively close so we know our, our calculations are right. We can repeat this procedure for all of our different applied axial forces. So that, that's what I do here, repeating the procedure for all of our different axial forces. And also we can repeat the procedure for our negative bending. So you can see that's what we're doing here. And then we can plot everything. Um, note for negative bending, one thing that we'll need to do is uh, we'll need to 
make the uh, uh, output from response in this column, we'll use the negative value. Uh, just, you know, response will give us a positive bending, so we just make this a, a negative value uh, to get our, our, our curve correct. So we can plot these different uh, plots. So here we have the positive and negative bending moment axial force. Uh, here I include as well the um, automatically generated moment axial force interaction diagram. And then here is our plot uh, with the factored interaction diagram and the unfactored diagram. So that's, uh, that's how you find the factored moment axial interaction diagram using uh, Response 2000 and Excel. And that concludes this example.